My story starts with Mrs. Goodeve, who, in October 1893, went with her children to visit the Ackland family near Bristol in the West Country. During their first night, Mrs. Goodeve was awakened by footsteps in the hallway. She wondered if something was wrong, so she lit her candle and finding no one in the hall, she returned to bed. She eventually went back to sleep, but was awakened by a gaunt, sad but kind-looking woman standing near her bed. She was wearing a shawl wrapped around her head and draped around her shoulders. The woman instructed Mrs. Goodeve to follow her across the hall into the upstairs drawing room. She turned and said, Tomorrow. The next morning, Mrs. Goodeve told the Acklands what had happened and described what the woman looked like. They recognised her as being a former resident of the house, a Mrs. Seagrim, who had wrapped her head in a shawl owing to the pain of her neuralgia. That night, Mrs. Goodeve was awoken again by Mrs. Seagram. This time, the ghost seemed very agitated and said she needed her help. Immediately, another ghost appeared to her right. This ghost was a tall, handsome man, aged around 60 years old. He introduced himself as Henry Barnard. He told her he was buried in the Snettisham churchyard. Then he gave the dates of his marriage and death. The ghost of Henry Barnard told her to go to Snettisham in Norfolk and verify these dates in the church register. If she found these dates were correct, she should, that same night, enter the Snettisham church and sit by the grave of Robert Cobb and that they would meet her there at 1.15am. He then told Mrs. Goodeve that when she gets to Snettisham, she will receive help from a man named John Bishop. Furthermore, she will stay in the house of a woman whose child drowned and was buried in the Snettisham churchyard. Then, when she has done all this, she will hear the rest of the story. As he finished talking, another ghost appeared behind Mrs. Seagram. This man looked very troubled and seemed to be in great distress and misery, so much so that Mrs. Goodeve could hardly bear to look at him. Slowly, the three ghosts faded from sight. She decided to travel to Snettisham to see if the dates that Henry Barnard gave her were correct. When she arrived that evening, she found that a village fair was in progress and that no empty rooms were available. When she finally located a room for the night, it was the home of John Bishop. When she told him that she was in Snettisham to confirm some marriage and death dates in the church register, he told her that he was the church clerk and could arrange for her to see the register. What's more, the next morning, Mrs Bishop mentioned that her child had drowned and was buried in the churchyard. Shortly after breakfast, Mrs. Goodeve got her first look at the imposing parish church of St. Mary's in Snettisham. She approached the front door, lined by Irish yew trees. Mrs. Goodeve attended the church service and then examined the register with John Bishop. The dates Barnard had given her were confirmed in the register. She also discovered that John Bishop had known Henry Barnard. When she described the ghost, John Bishop said, It sounded like she had seen Henry Barnard. Mrs. Goodeve asked Mr. Bishop to take her to Barnard's grave. He led her through the overgrown graveyard that surrounded the church to a small railed area that contained Barnard's grave, with white roses cascading over it. Sadly, those white roses are no longer there. Just before the designated time, Mrs. Goodeve entered the dark, dank church and took a seat by Robert Cobb's grave inside the church. John Bishop then locked the door from the outside and walked away. Mrs. Goodeve sat in total darkness and waited nervously. What happened next isn't completely known, since Mrs. Goodeve was reluctant to divulge all of the details. 
What she did say was the three ghosts appeared and asked for her help in sorting out a legal problem. When Henry Barnard had purchased Cobb Hall from Robert Cobb, something illegal had been done. Mrs. Goodeve was given instructions to correct the wrong. She was also asked to pick a white rose from Barnard's grave and deliver it personally to his daughter at Cobb Hall. Early the next morning, she walked to Cobb Hall and handed Barnard's daughter the white rose. She passed on the messages that Barnard had given her. Mrs. Goodeve's ghost hunting skills were never called upon again. Mrs. Seagram's ghost never made a reappearance at the Acklands house. Much of this tale remains a mystery. Why did the three ghosts appear together? Did Mrs. Seagram know Henry Barnard in life? Who was the third ghost? Why was the illegal property deal so important that they came together after death to try and correct it? Despite many attempts to solve these riddles, the mysteries remain, making it one of the most intriguing unsolved hauntings ever. <laughs>